Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargaming.com. Welcome Wargamers to the Developer Diaries for Ravage Star. In this video, we'll give you an update on the development of the rules. As Matt is downstairs crunching the balancing right now, we'll show you some community paint jobs, and we're just gonna just show you around and give you an update as to what's going on. The pledge manager is open, so there's a link in the description below. If you want to order more models, add it to your pledges, or if you didn't get a chance before the new year to get models, Get some models. You can order them and have it all ready by the time it comes out and is released. So, here we are. What are we doing today, Matt? Well, I am now at the point where I am trying to figure out how to balance the armies and the box sets as well, so that when you get a two-player starter set, that it's not that it's going to be perfectly balanced, but there will be ways to balance them. So what are these? So we're working, this is the second box set. This looks like Siege of Ankar. Is it Siege of Ankar? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Siege of Ankar. That's right. exactly. So it's a... Mind Gork Shacklers there. Yeah, it's a Gorkog versus Amari starter, two-player starter set. So Bugs versus Dwarves. <clears throat> and this one actually is probably the easiest to balance, but um, the, the trick that I'm, I'm working with right now is I have decided to experiment with not having points values at all. Ooh, do tell. What does that mean? So essentially, instead of paying per unit or even paying per model, you pay for a detachment. And you don't even pay for a detachment necessarily. You just have your, the size of your game is how many detachments you're bringing. Mm. And theoretically, if I can make it work, each detachment should be roughly balanced to another detachment. I say roughly, because I'm not gonna pretend that I can perfectly balance this game. And so a detachment, instead of you saying, you know what, I wanna bring a Horde Master and a unit of 12 Flesh Seekers and the Aegidon, and you know, he's 100 points, these are 80 points, that's 120 points. Now all of a sudden I'm like, well, are they worth 80 points? Is 80 points too cheap? Is How do you determine points... that? In right, yeah. there, are, there are ways to do it, but it takes extensive play testing. Yeah. So if instead I say, this is a detachment, a mm -hmm. Horde Master with two units of Flesh Seekers and Aegidon and a Mind Shackler, then you don't make those micro decisions. Mm -hmm. You just say, I'm gonna bring this detachment and that detachment might have its own special rules, it might not, it just depends. And then your opponent, the, the Amari opponent says, well, I'm gonna bring this detachment, which is Colonel Boberon. Boberon tracks. And we've got the guard, we've got two units of just this, uh, the infantry, and then units of the drones. Scout mechs. Yeah, the scout mechs, yeah, with their engineers with them. This should be roughly equivalent. Now, I, I probably, uh, there's a couple little things I can do to kind of jimmy around that. Like, I think the Amari here might be a little too good, but we haven't play tested that yet. But if I do find the Amari outclass this detachment a bit, then what I can do is, uh, like, one of the detachment rules can be when a unit of Flesh Seekers dies, put another one in reserve, and it gets to come on the next turn. Ooh, interesting. So you can kind of make up for it that way, and, and just having it be that, well, if this one is not quite enough, just give it a buff. Whether it's a new unit that comes in when they die, or maybe another buff all around, like you get to add an extra boost token. That could be, like if ah. I find they're close, like yeah. it's 90% of the way there, it's not quite, but adding another, like reinforcing a unit would be too much. Then right. it could be something as simple as um, that this whole, this whole detachment gets access to this boost. I don't mean a new boost token, that could be one. But it could be that they can all, when they boost, instead of choosing one of their two, they can do this one instead. Mm. And it's like a, it's a much better one. Interesting. Um, or at least it gives them more tactical variety as well, right? So Interesting. So how would you guys, how would you balance a game? I'm curious, right? Like, Matt's the right guy for the job here because of his experience in the, geez, what is it, 70 narrative campaign, custom rule sets you've made off of other rules, plus all the stuff you did in between that and your D&D stuff. And just how your mind thinks all the time. Like it's I'm trying. It makes sense. And plus, with your feedback as well, um, just uh, there's links below to Playtesters Group, miniwargaming.com slash Ravage Star. Yeah, and our Discord. In our Discord, right? So just you can jump in there and uh, give your two cents. But uh, what, what a fantastic mental exercise and just trying to figure out the balancing of this. Well, especially because I didn't design what goes into the boxes. Right. That was designed long before rules were written. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden I'm left with these conundrums of this is too many things or too few things or weird numbers of things. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it clicked is when I realized that a lot of the Veil Touched have like 13 models and I don't want them to be units of 13, so they're units of 6 and 7. But like what's better, a unit of 6 with a 
banner or the unit of seven with the champion. It's like, well, it's the detachment is one of each. I don't have to answer the question of which is better, mm -hmm. as long as the two of them work well together. And then playtesting becomes way easier too, because instead of this infinite permutations of like 30 units to internally balance, I can turn that into six or seven detachments to balance instead. Right, yeah, and that's so true. You can know if they're working. Interesting. And once you have a few detachments balanced, when you introduce new detachments, you can just see how it plays against the existing ones. And if it's always winning, it's too good. If it's always losing, it's not. Obviously not, yeah. So yeah. playtesting takes way fewer iterations to, to kind of get to that middling ground, that, that 45 to 55% win rate that you're really looking to strike. And, that, and the goal being, this being a starter set, you could actually play one side, have a friend play the other side, and they're roughly balanced to each other. Roughly. Now for yeah. some of the starter sets, that's just way off. And so that's not too bad because maybe in that starter set, it's just like there's two detachments for the one side and one detachment for the other side. And so you just have to decide which part of the starter set you're going to use um, against the weaker one. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, and I'm not only going to do detachments based on what's in the boxes, because eventually you're going to want to expand your collection. And so it'll be like as much as there's, this might be a detachment right now, and this is still pretty preliminary for me to say that it will be. Well, what if you want a detachment with uh, lots of flesh seekers? Well, let's create one. Let's drop these two things and make an attachment with four or five flesh seekers oh, and yes. the horde master with them. Right. Now that doesn't, there's no box that that comes in. And so you'll have to collect more boxes to do so, but it gives you more variety. You can, you plug and play detachments. And then the size of your game is like, how many detachments are you bringing? And like the, maybe the standard size game will be two or three. Um, and so instead of it being 2000 points, it's three detachments. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah, you need to say, I want these three detachments. Boom. Let's play. Is that what we're play testing tomorrow when we play our game? It'll have a certain number of detachments. Awesome. Yeah, I say a certain number because right now I'm trying to decide the size of a detachment. Yes. Is it like roughly equivalent to 250 points or is it roughly equivalent to 350 points? And that's why I have to go through every box set first yep. to see what would be easiest to start with. Do you think you'll do like a small, medium, large detachment sizes? Right now I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to make it that uh, that... Uh, like, for example, over here, the VTAD Apocalypse, which is a 20-wound monstrosity, he might just be a detachment by himself. Yeah, he looks like a detachment. He on, might be. On, he on, might on, be. That's what would be ideal. But he might, if I make the detachment slightly bigger, then he might be too weak to be an attachment mm. by himself. So it might be him and a unit of something else. Right. Um, yeah. And so, so, yeah, so maybe I'll have to, but I don't, if I make variable size attachments, then we're back to square one. Of just playing with points. Right. Because if I say a small, medium, large, well, that's just 100 points, 200 points, 300 points. And now I have to decide what's worth that. And so, whereas if each attachment is just like, well, let, let's put it this way. If there's something that's kind of underwhelming, mm -hmm. it could be made up for by something that's overwhelming. Whereas if I had you buy them unit by unit, I'd have to balance them to each other. Yes. Whereas in a detachment, not so much. Not so much. Anyway. So that's, that's the basic philosophy behind it all. Jumping over to some community paint jobs. First up, we have Lady Kane. Hey Dave, I'm super excited to hear that you are doing a developer diary to tell us more about Ravage Star. It was my absolute pleasure to paint out some of the miniatures for you. And in fact, I actually have one here. Uh, this guy was by far my favorite model to paint, Corvax Bonecrusher. I mean, just look at him. He is awesome. I can't wait to see what else you guys have in store for Ravage Star. I provided a link below to Lady Kane's Instagram if you want to see some more painted models, some skulls on the battlefield. Yes, she's a corn fan and you will see it all day long. Next up, we got Steve Stanzani miniatures in his diorama of an Amari fighting a Gorkov.
Thanks for tuning in to this week's Developer Diary. Stay tuned next week when Matt and I will be doing more coverage. We'll be playtesting more, more armies on the tabletop. Just a reminder, there is the pledge manager that is open so that you can order your stuff if you didn't get a chance before, before the Christmas break. Uh, you can do all that. Links provided in the description. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week.